Hi, everybody. So now I just want to go over um, basic, well, the beginnings of uh, collision detection. And this is just uh, me making sure that the character stays within the bounds of the map and doesn't walk over any walls. This is what it looks like right now. Uh, you can see it can move around. I sort of stop before I walk into walls. I'm definitely staying within the bounds of the map. Uh, just let me open this a little bit. So if I walk through the door at the bottom, for example, uh, it doesn't go any farther than outside the map. Now, obviously, it's not perfect. So I'm walking on the walls when I go down. And I can kind of walk on the walls when I go to the right, not to the left. Um, why is that? And not when I walk up, but when I walk down. So why is that? Um, first, let me walk through the code, and then I can uh, show something that will help uh, you picture what's going on here. So in the move player function, this is where I started to update just to restrict the player's movements from to within the bounds of the map. So I use our map X and our tile width and a little bit of math to figure out um, the outward bounds of the of the map. And then I put together a little function called position to tiles. It's just right here. Uh, where I take the current X and Y position of the character, and then I use a little bit of math to figure out which tile that would fall within. And then I return the tile X and a tile Y. And thanks to Odin, I can return uh, the two results. If you're familiar with Go, Go can also uh, return multiple results, and that's pretty handy. So I get my tile X and my tile Y. I do have to make sure that before I try to grab my tile from our map, I do have to make sure that I'm not going outside the bounds of the array. If I am, then obviously we're trying to leave the map and uh, I just won't change the character's position. But if we are within the bounds of the arrays, uh, in other words, within the bounds of the map, then I can grab the tile. And if the tile is zero, then that means we can walk through it. If it's a, a one, that means it's a wall, it's a solid object, we can't walk through it. So why is my character overlapping uh, overlapping everything? And to better illustrate that, I'm just going to I prepared some code ahead of time. I'm going to draw a little red uh, rectangle where the player's position is on the screen. And I'll do that just as I render the player. Here I'm just setting the draw color to red and I'm just creating a little rectangle 10 by 10 uh, and it is placed exactly where the player's destination is placed as well. So when I recompile, this will help you see, actually um, visualize which, which uh, position is being checked for collisions. So the, the position being checked for the collision is the top left corner of the red rectangle and whenever we're rendering the player sprite, the X and Y coordinates for the player is also at the top left of the image. So that's why when we're going down, the player image overlaps the wall. But you can see that the top left corner is within the bounds. So it is stopping where it is supposed to. Uh, similarly, when we go to the right, uh, sorry, towards the right here, I can overlap the player sprite overlaps the wall but the, the red rectangle doesn't. Now, I'm not exactly flush with it, and that's another problem. Um, I'm not, I will talk about that at the very end, and I'll, show, I'll share a link to um, something that uh, Casey goes over in the Handmade Hero series that explains why that's happening, and it's pretty, pretty interesting. So how am I going to fix this? Well, also in that link that I will share, Casey um, basically uh, illustrates how it makes more sense to visualize the character's position as being, you know, pretty much where you would, you know, see the character standing. So I'm going to move it just down uh, between his legs right there. And there's a few uh, things we have to do to, up, a few things we have to update to make that happen. Uh, we have to separate the player's actual position, so where that little red rectangle is, from where um, where we're rendering the image. I want to render the image off to the left and up from the actual position. And right now I'm just using a single XY coordinate for uh, for rendering and tracking position, but I wanna separate those two. Uh, I think the first thing to do uh, would be 
to add positions to our context. So actually, I'll add it right where the player is. So we'll do player X, uh, and we'll make this uh, an F64, and a player Y, also an F64. And this is because it'll just make it easier for us to do some math on it. And I'm going to cheat a little bit. I've got some notes off to the side here that'll help me uh, not lose my place. Uh, and then for, let's see, for rendering reasons, I also want to have a different render height than an actual player height and width because the player height and width I use for some math, uh, but I want to distinguish between the rendering height. So we're actually rendering twice as large as what the actual sprite image is. So I'll change this to render width. This is another constant. Player record height is the player height times two. So we'll go down in the code to where we're rendering our player. Uh, be just down here, right by it. So I'll change this player width, player height to our render width and render height. And our initial positions will be, now we can't make this our player X, player Y, because we're using uh, floats right here. So what I want to be able to do is to, and also this is our rendering target, I should say that. So we want to um, somehow trans translate, uh, convert from our actual position to our rendering position. So I'll use uh, some new functions that we'll add in, in a second. I'll do player render, sorry, player render X, and this will take our current player position. Uh, and then we'll have another conversion for player Y, like so. So what will these functions look like? I'll just move it down to the bottom here. Where can I put it? Uh, just before maps, I suppose, or just before move player. So we have player render X. And this is a procedure, and it will take an X coordinate that will be an F64. And this will return an I32. You'll remember I've said it multiple times that the um, SDL rect struct takes an I32. And it's the rest rect struct X and Y coordinates that tell us where to render the sprite. But uh, so right here, we're, we're uh, converting, I could say, um, player position X to the um, destination X for rendering. So we just want to return an I32. And where do we want to render? So if our actual position is between the player's legs, we want to render um, X, we want to go to the left by half of the player's width. Uh, so let me see if I remember that right. It'd be our, oh no, we're taking our X here. It'd be our X minus our uh, player, render width, we call it twice as, uh, twice as wide as our actual sprite width. So we're going to the left, we're subtracting the player render width by and half of that. Now, uh, the next one we want is render Y. And similarly, this will be a procedure. It will be an F64. We will return an I32 for our rect. We will take our Y, and this time, instead of, uh, we'll go up, so we're going up by the uh, player render height, just like that. So we want to go up the full height. So if our player is here, uh, our actual position is just down between his feet. We want to go to the left by half of his width, and we want to go up by his full height, and that's our XY coordinate for rendering our sprite. So our sprite will look like this, but uh, we'll actually see our red rectangle will be down between his feet, which is where we want to, um, that's our point of reference for when we're doing our collision detection. So we'll go to our move player. This is where we're taking our delta, so how much we want to move. This new delta will actually be an F64 because this will be our actual um, location, the actual position of the player. 
So our new x and y will be calculated not by the destination, uh, starting with the destination x, but the actual x. And I say destination x, but that's the the um, that's the that was the x coordinate for where we're rendering. So we get our new x and y based on our actual player locations. We use that for all of our checking. And then if we're if we are going to move, our new player uh, x will equal the new x, and player y will equal our new y. And here we have to do our conversion. So we'll do uh, no, render player x, which takes our new x, render player y, which takes our new y. And I just want to give a quick look through to make sure I'm not missing anything. And our, our red rectangle should move because we are also referencing our plan, player the destination x and y. Oh no, we don't want to do that now. Me, we want to render this where our player actually is. That's what we want. Player y. Now it'll move, but our sprite should render where we want. What am I looking for? Okay, so let's test that out and see how that looks. I don't think I've forgotten anything. Oh, I forgot a lot of things. Uh, let's see. Just some conversions, some type mismatches. Uh, yes, our player speed is still an I-32. Sixty-four. Let's see. Does that get me any closer? No. Two seventy-five. Okay, so player X and Y are an F64, so I need to convert those to an I32, so I can use it for my rect struct. Getting closer. 323. Okay, so I'm comparing an I32. So yeah, I'm using the, uh, the map integers to make sure the player stays within the map boundaries. So instead of converting to an I32, I will use an F64 because our new X and Y are an F64. And 326. Oh, this should be an I, sorry, this should be an F64. And undeclared name, render player X, render player Y. Oh, I didn't actually put the didn't actually put the functions in. Did I? I really thought I had. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I just named it wrong. Render player x, render player y. There we go. <laughs> render player y. There we go. Hallelujah. Okay. And my player is starting way off out of the map. I've I did this before. I didn't set my initial player x and player y, so I'll set that right here. Player x equals 100. Player y equals 100, so that way I should start within my map and I'll be able to move around. There we go. So now you can see the, the red rectangle is down between his feet, where we expect. And now when we're trying to walk through walls and that, um, the rendering will make a little more sense. So there's still a little bit of overlap, and I'll get to that in a future video. But for now, you can see now that we, we kind of, it looks a little better. We're stopping where we ought to. Also, it has uh, the benefit of when we stand in front of a wall, it kind of overlaps a little bit, which is kind of what you'd expect things to look like, you know, depending on the perspective that you're going for, of course. But that makes a little more sense. So hopefully that, you know, is uh, enlightening, kind of gives you something new. Uh, that was kind of where I'm at with that. Um, the next step for me will be to, 
will improve the collision detection. And I'll share a link in the description, as I said, that will uh, expand a little bit on um, why we're rendering this way and where to put the, the actual position of the character. And then uh, Casey also goes over some of the the, the bugs, the use cases, the te uh, what should I say, the edge cases that come with this sort of simple approach um, and the problems that happen with that, you know, things like phasing through walls and whatnot. So I'm still learning about that, but this is where I'm at for now and hopefully that helps you out a little bit. I'd like to hear where you're at with collision detection and if you have any other resources to share with me, I'd really like to read them because I understand this is probably one of those topics where there's a lot to cover and I'd be interested in reading them. Uh, okay, so thanks a lot and uh, leave a comment below. Appreciate it. Cheers.